Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for induction. This is the Intro to Induction video. This will be a part of a series. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to identify a type of statement that could be proved by induction, and you should be able to produce the structure of a proof by induction. We'll focus especially on the second one. The first one we'll get to more in uh, later videos especially. Our motivation is that induction is a powerful proof technique that allows us to prove results about objects that have self-similarity and symmetry. You may have heard of those words before associated with math. We will see many variations on induction in this course. Here's a warm-up question for you. Assume that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 is 7 squared. And what I mean by assume that, I mean don't actually compute it yourself, just take it for granted for now. Then, what happens if you take 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus 15? What is this equal to? I want you to solve this question without actually recomputing um, all of them. Take a moment to do this. Now, if we we, we know already that the sum from 1 to 13 of the odd numbers is 7 squared. We're assuming that. So let's replace this part with 7 squared. So this is 7 squared plus 15. And now we'll punch this into our calculator, or do it by hand. And we'll see that this is 64. 64 we recognize as 8 squared. So the interesting thing here is that from previous information, we were able to get um, a more complicated example. And we saw that this was of the form 7 squared, and this was of the form 8 squared. And we didn't have to add everything up again. There's a sort of similarity or, or reducing to a previous case. Uh, this is the basis of induction. This is the, the one of the key ideas behind induction. So our big observation is that we can get to one equation from one equation to the next without recomputing everything. This might not look so impressive now because maybe adding up nine numbers is not so hard for you, or however many this is, eight numbers. Um, but if this was the sum of maybe 2,000 numbers, you wouldn't want to recompute them every time. You'd want to use the work you previously did. So let's take a look at the question, uh, what is 1 plus 3 plus 5 all the way up to 99? So the odd numbers from 1 to 99. That's going to be our motivating uh, question. And we're going to use this to motivate how induction works and, and why we care about it. So the first thing is that 1 is equal to 1 squared. No surprise. And we're going to use this building up um, idea like we did in the warm-up. So if you know that 1 is equal to 1 squared, you can add 3 to both sides and get that 1 plus 3 is 2 squared. Now you add 5 to this and you get 9, so 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 3 squared. Then you add 7 to this and get that it's 4 squared. And you can keep going, and you'll see that the pattern eventually gives you that if you add 50 terms, you get 50 squared. Now, this dot 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 is a little bit suspect, and we're going to come back to it in a moment. But the idea here is we're going to start from 1, and then we're going to add one layer, and then add another layer, and then add another layer and keep adding layers till we get as large as we want. So the relationship is going to be this one. So let's take a close look at what we actually showed. So we proved P1, P2, P3, and P4 are true. So we showed that if you put in n equals 1 here, n equals 2, n equals 3, or n equals 4, this is an honest-to-goodness equality. And the warm-up was an implication. The warm-up said, assume that p of 7 is true, and you can get p of 8 from it. So you can think of this as a game of stepping stones. We got 1, 1 gave us 2, 2 gave us 3, 3 gave us 4, so all of these are true. And then we sort of skipped some stuff and showed p of 7 implies p of 8. But we don't know yet if p of 7 is true. 
So how could we get to p of 7? Well, we could go p of 4 to 5 to 6, and then that goes to 7. Then we'll know p of 7 is true since all four of these are true. This is the idea of induction. You start with something being true, usually p of 1, and then you show that you can always go from one thing to the next. So if you can always go one step further, then if 1 is true, that tells you that 2 is true, then 3 is true, then 4 is true, then 5 is true, all the way up to as large a number as you want. One important note, part 2 is not saying that p of n is true for all n. Part 2 is saying that you can go up one step, that you have an implication. Just because an implication is true doesn't mean that the conclusion is always true. You need this first part as well. Let's take a look at how we would actually prove this implication for this particular pn. So we're trying to prove in general for all n that we can go up one step. How do you prove a for all statement? Well, you start by picking an arbitrary uh, n. Now, how do you prove an implication? You start by assuming this one is true, and we're going to go to the next one. Remember that we're trying to prove an implication. So we're assuming this part for just this particular n, and we're trying to go up to this next one for n plus 1. So we're not tr assuming that p of n is true for all n. If we assumed that, then we could automatically uh, get this one. But we're just assuming this is true for a particular n, like n equals 4, and we want to get to n equals 5. Well, what does p of n being true for that particular n mean? It means that you get this sum. Now, what do we want? We want the next one to be true, so that if we add up n plus 1 terms, we get n plus 1 squared. So let's write this out. If you put n plus 1 in here, this will be the left-hand side of your sum. And our goal is to show that this is equal to n plus 1 squared. So let's use some algebra to do that. So first off, let's simplify this part. And now, what do we recognize? Well, we've seen this part before. This part right here is equal to n squared. Right, we were assuming that that was equal to n squared. Now, using some algebra on n squared plus 2n plus 1, this is equal to n plus 1 squared, which is what we wanted. So if we know that this layer is true, then we get that the next sum is true, the next layer is true. This is like the warm-up problem. It's like the warm-up problem, and I told you that the sum from 1 to 7 is 7 squared. You're allowed to use that. And then we, we replaced that part and got the next level for 8. Now, this motivating example, I think, is a little bit uh, algebraic and hard to wrap your head around. There's a very nice picture for it. And the picture goes like this. Here's 1, and we add 3 to it and get a square, and add 5 to it and get a square, and add 7 to it and get a square, add 9 to it and get a square. And then in general, if you have an n squared here, then you can add n plus n plus 1 and get the next term. So this is the idea about how adding an odd number to a square gives you a square again, and adding an odd number of the correct size. This shows you that there's some self-similarity, right? Going from this layer to this layer looks very similar to going from this layer to this layer. The fact that there was self-similarity was a good reason for why we should use induction. In the next video, we'll see a formal use of mathematical induction and an example. Thank you.